Good morning, family. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Today's devotional involves a hymn story. One of my favorite composers of church music was a man named Herbert Howells. He was a British academic, organist, composer, and church musician who lived through most of the 20th century. One of the things that marked his life was the tragic polio-related death of his nine-year-old son, Michael, in 1935. Howells was, of course, devastated by the loss of his son, and this dark emotion would find its way into his music. He wrote two requiems in his lifetime, one of them an a cappella work simply called Requiem in 1930, which remained unpublished until just a few years before his own death, and the other a large-scale choral work with orchestra called Hymnus Paradisi of 1950. The Hymnus Paradisi is really a much more mature reimagining of the earlier Requiem. It is dedicated to Michael with the inscription, To My Son, Michael Kendrick Howells, in remembrance. Nunc suscipe terra fovendum, gremioque hunc concipe moli, which is Latin for take him earth for cherishing, to thy tender breast receive him. Howells would use the same text in a standalone choral work called Take Him Earth for Cherishing, which he composed following the death of U.S. President John F. Kennedy. Though the real dedicatee was most likely his son, Take Him Earth for Cherishing was first performed at a joint Canadian-American memorial service on the first anniversary of the Kennedy assassination. All this to tell you about a hymn tune that Howells first published some 33 years after his son's death. He set this tune to a 17th century hymn by a German Calvinist named Joachim Neander. That hymn was later translated by the poet laureate of the United Kingdom, Robert Seymour Bridges. In 1986, a retired Methodist pastor named Fred Pratt Green translated it again in more modern language. The hymn is called, All My Hope is Firmly Grounded, and can be found at number 132 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Howells named the tune Michael after his son. See, Howells was confident in his faith that God had already saved Michael, although his earthly body was ravaged by polio. We've sung this hymn often in worship, but the earliest recording I have of it is from almost three years ago when we celebrated the centennial of our sanctuary. May we all remember that in the midst of great tragedy, our love for each other, of this pandemic, and in all things lies the healing power and grace of God our Father, our Savior, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the ever-present Holy Spirit. Be well this week, my friends, as you navigate your lives, and as always, wear your mask and wash your hands.